But ladies and gentlemen, before I invite our next speaker for this evening, there's something that I want you to take a look at. What is a dream? A dream could be something from our imagination, a desire and ambition. Our children's dreams are the nation's future. Their dreams today have the potential to be tomorrow's reality. Many of us had the care, love, protection and support that we needed. But for 40% of India's children who are in need of care and protection, that's not the case. As a society, if we want to get where we want to get, a place where supporting children's dreams is the norm and not a privilege, we need to decide and make that happen instead of just giving our sympathy. May I now welcome Ms. Gloria Benny. Ms. Gloria is the co-founder of one of India's fastest growing youth volunteer network called Make a Difference and Guardian of Dreams, a platform that empowers youth to become change leaders. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome her with a huge round of applause, Ms. Ben. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, it's an honor to be here today. Um, it's uh, like some of you just said, it's, it's humbling to hear all the stories of um, women who have gone above and beyond, um, in a lot of ways, uh, gone beyond the limits that society sets for us and becomes a shining light for the rest of the, you know, the, the next generation to come in. Um, my name is Gloria Benny, and I run a nonprofit organization called uh, Guardians of Dreams. And uh, uh, it's interesting because today I'm going to talk about uh, a topic which I think us women are great at. Uh, it's, the, it's the mother of all causes, uh, childcare. Yes, pun intended. So to start with, um, back in 2015, um, all of the UN member states got together and um, basically came up with a curated list of 17 sustainable development goals. And world over, all countries came together and said, these are the 17 goals that we want to uh, strive to achieve by 2030, right? So if you run through this list, you'll notice that there are themes of ending poverty, of fighting injustice and inequality, of tackling climate change by 2030. But if you take a closer look at this list, there's something that's quite discomforting and surprisingly, something that seems to be very, very important uh, and an important facet of human development that seems to be missing. The words child, childhood, and childcare. And on, on, the, on the other side, when I think about it, it's not surprising. It's actually symptomatic of a larger issue. The issue is that clearly, childcare or child development as, as a topic or as a sector itself seem to be ignored or we're not acknowledging um, that sector uh, in its whole. And uh, if you look at, and there are other examples of, uh, of this as well. If you look at um, what is the best, um, or rather let's look at this, which is that why is childcare uh, so important? And uh, by not acknowledging childcare as uh, a holistic sector, how is that manifesting in the kind of interventions that we're designing our society around? Um, what's happening actually is that a lot of the organized efforts in the space that is dealing with children, because childcare as a sector is not fully defined, is confining itself to just narrow fragments of the overall topic. Um, for example, there's a lot of emphasis on education, and rightly so. 
there is some emphasis on nutrition and there's a lot of effort happening in that, in that uh, area. There is also effort on prevention of abuse and so on. But those are just three different fragments of a larger topic or a larger banner called childcare. Now let's think about this. Um, if all of us in our room, when we were young and when we were, when we were children, if these were the only three inputs that we received, which is great quality education, um, where we had sufficient nutrition, and safety and protection from abuse, would we be where we are and would we achieve things in life without the other aspects that we had and have received, which is love, care, attention, exposure to opportunities, possibly even having that one adult or parent around who egged us on uh, till we became, I would say, positive adults in life. Not really, right? Exactly, that's exactly the problem with childcare just not being looked at holistically, but just the focus being on different fragments. But then, if all of us could be where we are today, something about the kind of childcare we received has worked. And if we look deeper, we'll notice how somehow families falling into the middle class and above brackets have been consistently and effectively been producing positive adults, irrespective of where the child's born or, or which country uh, the child's born into, be it um, India or Pakistan, Vietnam or US, if you happen to be born into a family that is middle class or above, uh, the likelihood of you achieving financial stability, the likelihood that you have received sufficient nutrition, uh, of not getting into trouble with law and order, all of this seems to be phenomenally high. So then the question is that, what exactly are these middle class and above families getting right? What is their micro societal approach to childcare that seems to be working so well while larger state missionaries seem to be missing this? When we look a little deeper, we notice how families are not focused on just um, the childhood inputs or how to effectively and efficiently, de efficiently deliver it, but they're basically willing to throw everything uh, and invest everything in the child that would achieve the end outcome. Their laser sharp focus on just purely getting a child to become a positive adult. That is what is clearly making the difference between how childcare is looked at within a family unit and what is look, looked at outside of a family unit. So if let's say families are <clears throat> um, great at childcare, then the question to ask is, then why not leave childcare to just families to take care of? Why not the state and the larger society focus on things that families don't take care of, which is let's say livelihood or tackling climate change? Why not just leave childcare to um, allowing families to take care of, of, of children? Oh well, <laughs> we don't really have an easy way out on this one either. The ground reality um, asks us to rethink this approach. A report that's published by SOS Village um, shows that there are actually in India alone two crore children who are at risk, who are, who are classified orphans, who are outside the family unit, or rather two crore children for whom the family unit has failed. Now the question is, are we as a society going to allow these two crore children to, to, let, to just be and wait for circumstances to play with their lives? Or are we as a society going to take responsibility for these, for these two crore children who happen to not be, be born into great families but still can have the potential to grow into people like you and I? And what that means is, as a larger society, as a state, we must figure out how to deliver effective childcare at scale outside of family units. How do we do that? First of all, I think one of the, one of the main uh, areas is, is the, this, this whole black hole of childcare. What are the different childhood inputs that will produce um, effective uh, adults? Identifying those inputs and isolating them, understanding their relation to producing adults. And from that knowledge, 
designing interventions that will ensure that they are effectively delivered and then setting up or building capacity to ensure that these uh, solutions that are designed can be delivered at scale. At the age of 19, um, we founded an organization, or our, rather our, our first organization, gave me an opportunity to um, work with or, or got exposed to 10,000 children living across children's homes in 23 different cities in the country. These were children that came in from various um, challenging traumatic scenarios. There were children that were, went missing, there were children that were abandoned by families, there were children that were rescued by trafficking. Basically, there was one common banner that remained uh, the same across all of these children, which is they did not belong to any effective family. And it was this exposure that a few of us got at a very young age that kind of shook our, and in a lot of ways burst our bubble, because we happened to be born into great families, so we didn't think there were children that didn't have so. What startled us about um, the way these, the orphanages or children's homes worked was that the quality of childcare that was delivered in these homes was so poor that it was a safe, safe assumption to make that these two crow children had little chance of, get, of getting out of their poverty cycle and becoming positive adults. However, if we need to get this right, <clears throat> what, after a decade of working in the space, what we were convinced of was that these, ve the ve these very old children's homes or orphanages was actually the bedrock of childcare within a society. For a child that is not born into an effective family, the state says, hey, come over. We have orphanages, we have children's homes where we will provide as effective as the childhood inputs that you would get in a family so that you could also become a positive adult. That's why children's homes are so, so crucial for us to work with. Me, me and my team in Guardians of Dreams <clears throat> is actually working to fix this. What we're doing is we look to transform the quality and effectiveness with which these children's homes across the country are able to deliver childcare. And we're doing that by, again, we're trying to keep a laser sharp, sharp focus on figuring out what are the various childhood inputs, filling those knowledge gaps, designing interventions based on that knowledge, and then building uh, implementation capacity. What we're doing in Guardians of Dreams is taking a 360-degree approach to working with children's homes, enabling them in various aspects, right, from improving the uh, environment of the homes to improving the kind of nutrition that the children are getting to looking at improving the quality of education to also looking at how are the children able to access their rights to eventually looking at who are the caregivers that are working with the children in these homes. And with my team in Guardians of Dreams, what we're looking to do is to build and craft a better future for our children. To build a society where we can guarantee that every child gets their, their required care and support to grow into positive, productive, stable adults who will then uh, become the future of our nation. Thank you.